the BitX GT, a dual chip version of the BitX Gamma. So let's take a look on it. Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing well. well. This right here is the BitX GT. We do have the version 800 and this is the XXX version, which means this is a development unit. It's not fully ready, but so far we figured everything out that we needed to do and we are really positive about releasing this very soon. So with this video today, I'd like to actually show you what is in the device and what you can expect from it. So obviously we still do have this little tiny display and you can replace this tiny display with something bigger like a 2.4 inch screen that I've showed in another video. I'll make sure to put a info card up here so that you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, you could technically use this display right here with this four pin connector, but we have a lot going on on the back and there are plenty of components that we wanna take a look on because I do think like the front, it's not really that important. We do have like both of these chips, the heart of this device, obviously it is important, but there are plenty of changes on the back. And one of the nicest things on the front here are those gold-ish plates here. These are basically places or plates that are going through the PCB into these tiny devices, which are the TPS 546. These are the back converters that are converting the incoming voltage down to the voltage that the ASIC actually needs. And therefore, this right here is a place where you can attach some of this blue goop. Or what you can also do is you can attach a thermal pad and transfer the heat into the heatsink because there will be a giant heatsink on this front end here. I'll probably show you this in just a second as well. But uh, with this blue goop, you can transfer the heat from the back converters over to the heatsink without the need of actually attaching any heatsinks on the back here. So the back will stay without any heatsinks, which is probably a nice thing because plenty of you people are actually into overclogging and stuff like this. And you want to make sure that you get rid of all the heat that you do have on these devices. But well, apart from that, we now know these two devices are the back converters here. What else do we have? We have the reset button here on the side and the boot button on the other side here. One of the nicest things that has changed with the GT version is this connector. This is a so-called XT30 connector. It probably some of you guys will say, well, that's not a real connector. It's out of the RC. Uh, plays and yeah this connector is used in RC, car, RC cars, RC planes and so on but this one is rated for really really high amperages and it's just doing a perfect job. So this one right here is also used in a couple of industry standards so therefore we decided to ditch the barrel connector because the barrel connector itself is just not rated for what exactly we want to achieve and try in the future. So we switched over to the XT connector, which also, because it's flat on this one and angled on the top here, it prevents you from actually putting in the connector the wrong way around. So you cannot do that, which is really a nice touch because otherwise probably a couple of people would just uh, fry the device. We also do have a new connector up here, which is a SFF connector, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is for flexible cables. And here is one of these flexible cables. There is already something in the working for this connector. The connector itself is called the BAP. It's called the BIDEX accessory port, which is a port that we introduced over a year ago, but never really wrote the protocol. So the past four to five months I was working on it and I finally finalized it. So now if you do have a device and you have developed yourself a software for this, you can control your bit eggs over this port entirely. You can read the temperature, you can read the hash rate, you can read the voltage, the power usage, but you can also set like the fan speed, you can set the ASIC frequency, the ASIC voltage, and so on. So basically you can do whatever you want with this connector. I also do have the first implementation of a client protocol. Everything is working smoothly. I will show you this in another video and I'll also make sure to show you 
how you can get into actually programming or developing yourself a BAP client, but that's something for the future. If we take a closer look on all the other components, we do see we have here the ESP32 and a bunch of other components. These big ones here are the coils which are needed. We also do have some two of these larger capacitors as well as a bunch of these smaller ones here. Everything basically the same. One of the differences is this component on the bottom here. This is the TMP2103, which is also a temperature sensor or a temperature reading IC, which we connected to both of the diodes of the chips itself. So with that, we can read out both temperatures. So on the web UI, you will actually see two temperature readings if you have a GT as soon as it is coming out and you can get yourself one of these if a couple of these manufacturers are actually producing them, which I believe they will. And uh, yeah, then you do have two temperature readings, so you have a little bit more accuracy when it comes to what exactly is going on with my chips, because you don't you don't want to just read one temperature, you want to read everything. And we made sure to use the EMC2103 to actually make sure that we can read both of the temperatures. If we now take a look on the front again, we do see we have one single unit for the fan connector. Possibly we could extend this to a second one. For now we only have a singular one, um, but that's not that bad. So the idea is that you have a heatsink that goes in here, you attach a fan and it is some blower style. Uh, maybe this needs to be moved to the bottom as well. Currently not sure about that. Uh, there is the option. So you see these holes are placed in such a way that you can technically also place this on the bottom. Um, I doubt that this will restrict any airflow, but technically speaking, you can also put this on the bottom of the PCB so that all the components are on the back and just the screen and the ASICs are on the front. Technically possible. If you're looking for home mining solutions or any educational content all around Bitcoin, look no further than Bitcoin Permanent, your only choice of getting the newest and hottest tech worldwide. Check them out at bitcoinbrevent.com. Another cool thing is that you actually do have, or we have fixed another issue with the USB-C connection. So when you do have yourself a BitX Gamma, the 601 version, there is a bug or Technically, we forgot to add something, which was that we forgot to add a resistor to the USB-C connector. So if you do have a MacBook or any other USB-C laptop and you try to flash firmware over USB-C with the BitX web flasher, which you can find under flasher.bitx.org, then sometimes it was not recognized and you needed a USB-A to USB-C cable because then it would recognize the device. We fixed that on this board, so it should work just flawlessly here. Apart from that, all the other components that we do have here are basically the same. There's a small TPS up here for the ESP32, and uh, apart from that, it's a dual chip device. It is our first approach of like, let's play a little bit with 12 volts, let's play a little bit with something else for the temperature reading, and also let's try to actually make sure that we can use two chips simultaneously. It was initially a little bit finicky, but we figured it really quickly out. So uh, this testing device here is currently the latest standard on the repository. The repository itself is already open source, so you can build yourself one of these ports if you want to, but it is not released for, well, you can produce it in masses and you can sell it to the people because we needed to fix a couple minor bugs that we finally have done. So with that, I, I thought it might be a good idea to actually talk about this device and show you what exactly is on there. Now let me quickly grab the working device that I do have on my other desk and let me show you the heatsink. So I think this is, <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks weird. And I know I do have some zip ties here, um, but that's for a good reason, because I was playing around with this heatsink. The heatsink itself is massive and it, yeah, it just features the option to have one of these bigger heatsinks here or these bigger fans 
obviously I put myself a Noctua fan on it, but technically you can also put in any of these other Chinese 12 volt fans here. Uh, but I was choosing the Noctua because I just wanted to have a little bit more, a little bit more silence. The difference between those both, very pff, close to nothing uh, when it comes to the noise, to be honest. It's a little bit less on this because the other one has a little bit of uh, whining. This doesn't, which is nice, but still, uh, yeah, Noctua fans are really expensive. The heat heatsink itself is really massive and I do have these zip ties on here to make sure that I do have some proper connection between every single part of the ASIC and the heatsink because the heatsink that I do have and the way I mounted it with these screw screws here in it, it was bending the PCB slightly. Obviously this should not happen on any of the devices that you do receive from a manufacturer, but speaking about it, this is a testing device. So it is expected to be janky, to be looking a little bit off. So that is totally fine with me in this example. Also, we do have the fan connector here on the back, as I told you, and uh, I was putting in like the, the fan cables like this. So speaking about it, I think like this heatsink here might be used by a couple of manufacturers, but probably not all of them. Also, I received this over from the US, so I don't actually know where this exact heatsink has been <laughs> has been gotten from, but probably you can get these heatsinks on AliExpress. If we take a look on the measurements for the device itself or for the for the holes, we can see that we are sitting at like 50 millimeters in length. Yeah, that looks kind of correct and also 50 millimeters in width. So it is a 50 by 50 thing that you need if you actually want to attach a heatsink. So if you do have any heatsink or you want to get or build yourself one of these BitX GTs, you can do that. But for the heatsink, you need something with mounting holes 50 by 50. So that's really, I think, an important part to tell you here. And obviously you can also just attach a screen like that and then it will work, it will show you the stats, you can click the boot button to cycle through all the screens and that's basically it. I think that is a really, really, really neat and quick overview about the BitX GT, the next BitX. We already also are working on the next chip that Bitmain is releasing, the S23 chip. So if you guys are interested in that and want to receive news about that in the future, make sure to subscribe to this channel. That will help me out and you will stay notified about any upcoming changes and what's going on in the open source scene. So with that, I thank everybody for tuning in and watching this video. Till then, keep hashing and see you next time.